Hello friends, Eli here from Mystic Circuits. Today I want to show you what the spectrum mirror does on an oscilloscope to gain a more intuitive understanding of its controls. Here, I have a simple sine wave patched into the spectrum mirror. There is no modulation or anything in order to make this patch more confusing. Just a simple sine wave going into the spectrum mirror. All that jazz. The blue line is the spectrum mirror output and the yellow line is the clock signal. Here you can see that our sine wave is being passed through the spectrum mirror completely unaffected, and that our clock signal is stuck in the on position. This is no accident. When the spectrum mirror's clock is high, any voltage at the input will be sent to the output unaffected. Now, I'm going to decrease the pulse width of the spectrum mirror's internal clock and we will start to see some of the track and hold effect. Notice that whenever the clock signal goes low, that the output voltage is held steady. This is just like on a normal sample and hold, except that when the clock is high, the input signal is passed through. If I were to decrease the pulse width so that our incoming clock was just a series of little spikes, our output would look like what you would expect out of a standard sample and hold. Like that. You can see here that we have a sort of staircase version of our input sine wave. Because the pulse width for the clock is so low, only tiny slivers of the input signal are passed through until another voltage is held at the output. Now watch as I change the frequency of the internal clock. You will notice as the frequency increases, our steps in our staircase become much shorter. And as I increase that internal clock frequency into ultrasound, the output becomes much more similar to the input. Even though there are still little staircase steps and they are distorting the output signal, this happens at such a high frequency that you won't be able to hear much of the effect. Now this is a good point to show the morph output and how high pass sampling works. You can see the morph output in purple. If you want to get the spectrum mirror into high pass sampling mode, turn your resonance attenuator all the way down and the morph knob fully counterclockwise. In this setting, the morph output will be the input signal minus the output of the down sampler. Now I need you to follow me somewhat mathematically here. If the input signal and the output of the down sampler are identical, then the difference between them is zero and there will be nothing at the morph output. Because the morph output is the input signal minus the output of the down sampler, if those two signals are the same, they will cancel each other out. As I mentioned earlier, when the internal clock of the spectrum mirror is either at a very high frequency or at a very high pulse width, the output of the sample and hold will be very similar to the input. However, if we decrease either the frequency or pulse width of the clock, we will start to see a bigger difference. Watch what happens when I decrease the frequency. You will notice that the spikes from the morph output get much bigger. This is because when the sample and hold is having a large effect, the difference between the input and the sample and hold output becomes rather large. I like to think of this mode as the error between the input and the sample and hold. The more damage that your sample and hold does to the input signal, the higher that the morph output amplitude will be. Just messing around to show you some more of the waveforms. This is a nice high pass sampling 
waveform with the little spikes going in both directions, like the input signal. Okay. I have one more important thing to show you in this mode, and in order to do so, I will overlap the morph output and the sample and hold output. If I increase the pulse width of the clock, you will notice the morph output gets smaller again. This is because the output of the sample and hold is passing through more and more of the input, making the sample and hold output more and more similar to the input. Therefore, the difference between the input and the sample and hold output gets smaller. If I turn the pulse width all the way up, the sample and hold will pass through the input, while the morph output will pass through nothing. I'll show you this again. However, when I decrease the pulse width, the opposite happens. You will see the sample and hold output have longer and longer hold times while the morph output grows in amplitude. Once the pulse width goes all the way low and we have no more clock signal coming in, you will see that the sample and hold output is just a DC voltage and the morph output is a clean shift signal which is shifted up or down by that voltage. Watch as I decrease the pulse width again. You can see the morph output growing in amplitude while the sample and hold output gets more and more downsampled until we have a DC voltage on the sample and hold output and the morph output has a clean sine wave coming through. This is the exact opposite of what happens when the pulse width is all the way high where we had nothing coming out of the morph output and the sample and hold output was passing through a clean signal. Now you'll notice sometimes your morph output is shifted up or down. And this is because the sample and hold output is holding a voltage and that voltage is being added to the input, subtracted from the input, I guess, in this case, but it's still centered around that voltage. Now, I use this effect all the time to get interesting panning effects, which use the down sampler to alternate between outputs. Try hard panning these outputs and see what kind of interesting stereo images you can achieve. And there you have it. You now completely understand the spectrum mirror. I look forward to you teaching me more about it. Thank you for watching.